Guys, I'm just, I'm getting old. I need so much coffee now. This is what happens, everyone, when you are, in, when you get old on YouTube. All right, let's, I, yeah. What's the most metal thing I've ever done? Well, first of all, what is something, what does it mean to be metal? Like mental? No, not at all. Yes. Like punk. Punk? I don't know. I don't really think I've done anything punk. Like really cool. Like really you know, cool? You know, I do th really cool things all the time. I hold dinosaur teeth. I wear expensive jewelry at JTV. I go to Brazil. I mean, like, I have a pretty cool career. I feel like being a gemologist is pretty metal. I guess I should open up the box. I think there's probably like a big, beautiful gold bracelet that has Natalie written on it. To Natalie, love your production team. Three, two, one. Silver, gold, copper. Pretty cool, huh? All right, guys, today we are talking about metals, but you know, we've talked about, you know, how silver grows like a tree, popping that video up. We've talked about gold, popping that video up. But I wanted to talk to you guys about metals in jewelry and how we actually get the metal that you use um, for your engagement ring or in your watch and kind of the whole process that goes into that. So fun fact, 18 karat gold is actually like 75% gold and then there's other alloys that are in it. The definition of an alloy is basically the combination of a couple elements to give more strength. So, you know, for instance, steel is a combination of I believe iron and carbon. Okay, so what's really cool about steel is like you can actually, you know, you see steel in like buildings, but you also see steel in watches. Like my watch right here, that's stainless steel. And there's different types of stainless steel. So I have some pots and pans at home that are 1810 stainless steel. You see 1810, you know, used in hospitals. So, you know, what's so cool about steel is that there's so many different uses for it from, you know, manufacturing and building buildings to the medical field to stainless steel in my watch. Okay, so I didn't actually know what actual bronze and brass were until we were kind of researching this episode. So bronze is copper and tin. Brass is copper and zinc, which I think is so neat. Bronze and brass are actually used in jewelry. Some jewelry, you'll see some at JTV, is actually a base of bronze and brass. So it's like a base metal and it is plated with gold or silver. And that is, you know, to make sure that the piece is still affordable. Because if you have a huge necklace you know, that's just straight gold or straight silver, like that can get really expensive. So a way to make some pieces of jewelry more affordable is to have plating over bronze or brass. So one of the coolest things about alloys, I think is, you know, the history. So the Bronze Age started in about 3000 BC. And what was so cool about that is that at that point in history, humans had figured out how to combine two metals to make something stronger. And they were able to use that for utensils, you know, for hunting, you know, basically just building their lives. Then, if you think further, to, you know, to steel. Steel has been used, as we mentioned, in medical, in the medical field, in jewelry, you know, but also to build buildings and skyscrapers and bridges. And I just think that's so cool how these alloys, you can find them in, you know, the, your earrings, you can find them in probably your iPhone, but you can also find them in huge buildings and they've been kind of the crux of human civilization. So gold, it needs other metals. Oftentimes it's copper, zinc, or silver to make it strong enough to be set in jewelry. But you know, it's really important to know what these metals are mixed with because it can give it a different color, it can give it a different look, it makes it stronger, it makes it more durable for jewelry. Jewelry has been around for, you know, forever. I think actually one of the first pieces of jewelry ever found was in Monaco. I think it dated back to like 20, 25,000 years ago, but I do remember it was like a fish necklace or like a bone necklace. So over the centuries, jewelry has kind of developed and changed as humans have. And what's really cool about these different types of metals was back in medieval times, you know, higher status people in society would wear jewelry with metals like silver and gold. But those in like lower ranks would wear jewelry using copper or pewter. So, you know, it was so expensive, not everyone could afford it. And now, you know, more people can afford that. But I just think it's neat how the 
use of metals and how the use of jewelry has changed throughout the centuries and what we find attractive now has changed. And, you know, we've talked about on this channel how the different eras of jewelry from the Victorian to the Art Deco. And I just think that the metal kind of morphs with humans as well. So noble metals are metals that are used a lot in jewelry. Um, examples of these are silver, rhodium, gold, platinum. So the reason they're called noble metals is that they're usually resist they're resistant to corrosion. So they make for really good choices for jewelry because you know they're they're going to last. And we have not talked yet about silver. So silver um, this probably looks a little bit different than what y'all are used to seeing in silver jewelry. I'm not wearing any silver right now. If you want to learn more about how silver grows like a tree, you can learn more um, from one of our edutainment videos and we'll pop up the links there. But silver in jewelry is super cool. So we talked earlier about how gold is stamped and we can jump into a, in a further episode about what the stamping means and all of the regulations. But anyways, in jewelry, you will see 925 for silver and that is basically like 92% of that ring, that mixture is silver. And their silver in jewelry is an alloy, it's mixed with other metals to make it so it is durable and usable for jewelry. Just like gold, gold and silver will come out of the ground looking like these, but that's not what it's gonna be like in your jewelry because we need you know, to make a piece that will stand up to time so that you can pass on your favorite earrings or your bracelet or your ring to your son or daughter and they can pass it on to their children. And that's you know one of the reasons that we use these alloys Alloys is to make it durable and strong. All right, so in silver jewelry, you're gonna see a 925, and that's 92.5% is actually silver. So that other 7.5% is usually copper, and that is you know specified by the FTC, that is you know in the jewelry business. There's also another type of silver. It's called Mexican silver. It might look a little bit different. What I recommend you guys do is go purchase, you know, can you purchase a piece of Mexican silver and a purse of sterling silver? I don't think I've ever actually seen Mexican silver in person, but that'd be a really cool way to kind of compare those two alloys and that, that mixture and see what they look like when you're wearing it. All right, so there is a difference between the Mexican silver and the sterling silver and coin silver. So coin silver in the US is 90% silver. But you know, there are examples of other, you know, of silver and gold because they are precious metals being used as currency. You know, it's obviously not solid gold or solid silver in your jewelry. Um, it's mixed together, but this is just, you know, something for y'all to think about how we can mix these two and get a really fabulous piece of jewelry and how also silver Silver and gold have been used as currencies and they've been used for hundreds of years in jewelry. And I just think it's really neat. You know, if you guys have your, your grandmother's jewelry, go look for the stamps on the back of the jewelry. You know, go look at jewelry stores and see what they offer. You know, use this episode to kind of give you a jumping off point. So when you are purchasing jewelry, you know, you know what kind of metals you're actually purchasing. All right, guys, I want you to take a closer look at this piece of gold and this piece of silver. I am not wearing any silver today, but I am wearing, um, there's gold in my earrings. Look how different this looks compared to my earrings. Look at the different, you know, shades. Look at the, the brightness even looks different. So that is all thanks to the different mixture that these designers and jewelry makers and manufacturers use when they are making jewelry. It gives it a different look. All right guys, so I gave you some homework today. I think I'm gonna start doing that more often. Do you like that? Comment below and let us know what you think, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Ring that bell because hopefully this episode will turn into a series of episodes and we can learn together all about different metals used and kind of explore the world of maybe jewelry making and jewelry manufacturing. Pretty cool, huh?